This tutorial is for Web3 developers who want to interact with Uniswap v2 with code. I'm going to show you how to deploy a Uniswap v2 pair locally, and a pair is the v2 equivalent of Uniswap v3's pool. And I'm going to give you the easy way to do it. I've seen and read other tutorials on this topic, and honestly, they're doing it the hard way, copy-pasting and compiling Solidity contracts from Uniswap's GitHub, but the truth is you don't need to do that. And being able to deploy pools locally gives you a huge advantage and saves you money because you can test without wasting Ether or test Ether, which is also hard to come by. I'm going to make this fast and easy. Let's go. I have a hardhat project set up here with a few libraries already installed, and I'll give you this list of libraries in the video's description. To note, I'm using Ethers 5. If you're using Ethers 6 or another version, you'll need to make a few changes to get it working, so just use 5 for now. I also have two very vanilla ERC-20 Solidity contracts here. They have out-of-the-box ERC-20 functionality with the ability to mint tokens after they've been deployed. I'll also give you these so you can copy and paste them. We'll be writing our code in this scripts file, so you'll be able to run this, and this will create the pair and add liquidity, and then you'll be good to go with experimenting with whatever you want to experiment with, whether that's swaps or arbitrage or whatever. Firstly, we import some specific modules from Ethers that we'll need. I also dropped the artifact for wrapped ether into the directory root, because we'll need this as well. Let's import that here. And that's this file just over here. Now we'll need the bytecode for the Uniswap contracts that we'll be using. We'll be using these three Uniswap contracts, Factory, Router, and Pair. And you could copy these contracts, the Solidity contracts, into our project and compile them to get the bytecode, or you could just grab the bytecode from the Uniswap libraries, which is what we'll do. And I'll give you this in the video's description as well. Now let's begin our main function, where we'll be writing the rest of our code. First, get the signer generated by Hardhat, which has been preceded with ETH. We'll only need one signer for this script, and we'll name that signer Owner. Now let's deploy the Uniswap v2 factory. And we do this by first creating an instance of a contract factory, which is different from the Uniswap factory itself. Contract factory comes from ethers. And we'll need to pass a few arguments to this. We'll pass the ABI for the Uniswap factory contract. And we can get this from the factory artifact that we imported above. We'll also need the bytecode, which we can also get from that artifact. And the bytecode is just the compiled contract. Now that we have this instance of the factory, we can deploy it. And let's print the address of the deployed contract on our local network so that we know it's successfully deployed. Let's also add this block of code, which runs our script when we run this file. I'll give you this again in the description. And we don't actually want to print the whole factory object, so let's call dot address on that. The next step is to deploy our tokens, so we can create a pair with them. Firstly, USDT, which I called tether in the contract itself. and deploy it.
And again, let's print its deployed address. Now do the exact same thing with our other token. And don't forget to add dot address. Now our tokens are deployed and we want to mint tokens to the owner so that the owner has some tokens that we can eventually provide as liquidity on our pair that we create. The first argument is the address that we're minting tokens to. And the second argument is how many tokens. Do the same thing for our second token. Now let's create our pair, which is the contract representing the swap pool. And I'm saying pool because I've been looking at Uniswap v3 a lot lately, but it is called a pair on Uniswap v2. So create a pair with the create pair function and pass it both token addresses as arguments. and then wait for that to deploy. Now we can use the factory that we previously initialized, the Uniswap v2 factory, to look up the address of the pair that we just deployed. And again, we'll just pass it the addresses of the two tokens that created the pair. And let's print the address of our pair. This time it's already just the address, so we don't need to call dot address. And let's initialize the pair contract locally so that we can call functions on it. And this takes three arguments, like when we typically create an instance of the contract class, the address of the contract, its ABI, and the owner. Now let's check its reserves right now, and they should be zero. Reserves are the amount of both of the tokens in a pair. And we can get the current reserves with the get reserves function. And I have to say Uniswap v2 is so intuitive compared to v3. Now let's print those reserves. And don't leave yet, we now can add some liquidity to this pair. To do this, we want to use the Uniswap v2 router contract, but to initialize that, we first need to deploy a version of wrapped ether because it's required to initialize the router contract. So let's deploy wrapped ether on our local network now. and deploy it. And let's log the address. Now let's deploy the Uniswap v2 router, which lets us do a lot of cool stuff. Again, we'll need the ABI, the bytecode, and the owner. And it takes two arguments when we deploy it, the factory address and the address of wrapped ether. And print its address so we know that it was deployed.
Now, before we can add liquidity to it, we need to approve token transfers to the router contract from the owner's wallet. And we can do this on the token contracts themselves by calling approve. And the approve function takes two arguments, the address of the contract we want to approve transfers to and the amount we want to allow approving. And for this, uh, I'm using max UN 256, which is the maximum amount that uh, unsigned integer 256 can be and passing this as the amount. Now wait for this to complete and then do the same thing with USDC. Now, normally we want to add liquidity at the current ratio in the pool because the price of a pool is really just the current ratio between the two tokens. I said pool again, but I meant pair. So adding at a different ratio than the pool currently is at is just throwing away money. But since we're creating the pool right now, we're adding the initial liquidity, we can start it with whatever ratio we want. So we'll use a one-to-one -one price ratio. And we can achieve this by adding the same amounts of both the first and second token. Now let's add this liquidity. Firstly, set a deadline for the transaction. This sets the deadline for 10 minutes from now. And let's call add liquidity on the router. And this takes a number of arguments. Firstly, the address of the first token. Then the address of the second token. Then the amount of the first token we want to add as liquidity. Then the amount of the second token that we want to add. Then the minimum amount of liquidity we want to add for the first and second tokens, otherwise the transaction will revert. The address that is adding the liquidity and the deadline. And lastly, we'll pass a super high gas limit to guarantee this transaction goes through, but don't do this on production. Wait for this to complete. And let's print our reserves again on this pool. And this should have increased. I should have called dot address on the second argument. And this is what you'll need to run this in your console. Let's give it a run. We can see there's now reserves in the pool for the amount of liquidity we added. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe. Tell me what else you'd like to learn about Uniswap or Arbitrage or whatever else, and I'll see you next time.